we want students to make whatever choice is best for them and for their families. And it's really hard to do that if you don't have exposure to different opportunities. Hello, and welcome back to the hashtag proud to be LBUSD podcast. I'm your host, Diana, and today we'll be talking with Michelle Tomasian and Gehao Fujikami from LBUSD's Office of Equity, Engagement, and Partnerships about internships in the district. So I guess we can just open right up uh, and discuss, you know, how these inter- internships work at the district. Well, thank you for having us, Diana. It's awesome to be here. Um yeah, just to share briefly about how internships work. So um, it works kind of in a number of ways. So I would just say the best way to think of our team is really as a hub of information about internships. So we do uh, partner with various businesses and organizations in across sectors, so private, public, et cetera, um, to develop internship opportunities, to talk through learning objectives, um, to actually design the internship positions themselves. But we're also an information hub. So we also um, gather information of regional programs. Um, we've got partners at Pacific Gateway. So there's a variety of different programs. The port has its own amazing summer internship program. So what we want to do is just create a space where students know where to go to learn about internship opportunities, regardless of where they come from, so long as they're quality and vetted, which is also one of our duties. But um, essentially, but depending on the position um, that it's like any other career opportunity or job, you would just follow the instructions on how to apply. It does vary, right, by employer, but um, we try to make it as accessible as possible so that, again, we have a one-stop shop on our website where students know what available positions are out there at any given time. Got it. And so then kind of to build off of that, how, how exactly do businesses qualify or get involved in this role? Um, so with, with uh, the businesses we partner with, um, you know, we want them to have so clear learning objectives, definitely. And that kind of uh, what separates an internship from work experience. So you've got your work experience, which is um, set out in the description. So that's part of it with responsibilities, a list of duties. But um, what separates it is is having clear learning ob- objectives, um, whether it be um, career mentorship, learning about different g- careers in the industry or in that particular business or organization, um, job shadowing as well. So it's just a little bit beyond just um, doing the work at hand. Got it. And then um, I-, I know that, and I- I'm sure we're going to get to this as well, that these internships obviously have numerous benefits for the students involved, but um, can you speak a little bit to, you know, how this is actually beneficial to the businesses and I guess specifically some like local upstart businesses? You know, reading through some of the evaluations from business partners, um, they shared that, you know, a lot of the interns helped with their programming, um, enhance their programming. Um, some in social media was able to build their social media presence. Um, also, just assist staff with um, daily activities, uh, routine activities. Um, and those are kind of the benefits that that uh, employers have shared with us. So um, they really enjoy it. And I'd also add, too, like they really like they learn a lot from students, right? Like they get a new perspective, they get fresh perspective. Um, A lot of students are very social justice oriented. So especially when you're dealing with startups and smaller businesses and orgs, they can really represent the voice of young people, of their peers, um, and then also issues around equity along multiple lines, right? So it's a really great opportunity. And then beyond that, I would say they're just getting to see your brilliance and your talent as students in Long Beach, right? And they're saying, oh my goodness, we want to invest in these young folks because they are our future workforce and we need them. And they are going to be the leaders in our industries, right? Five, 10 years from now. So I think it's something that is beneficial both on a on a personal level, right? And then also on a workforce development level where Um, You know, people from Long Beach are so proud to be from Long Beach and they want to retain the local talent that is right here. And I think this is a beautiful way in which they can do so. And as Keha shared, it's so fun to read their feed or their evals um, because we give students and business partners um, 
just a survey at the end of the experience because we also want to know like what do we need to know to make this a better experience for both parties and to make it meaningful and worthwhile. And I think it's uh, interesting, uh, Kay, how you mentioned, you know, social, a lot of students were assisting in social media. And I would even, you know, maybe not make the argument that, you know, students might even have like a greater perspective on that. I mean, my age group is definitely the one that spends the majority of our time on Instagram. So I think that's really interesting that you bring yeah, that up. Yeah, very true. Very true that, that we've seen um, from multiple businesses and partners. Um, it's just that different point of view. Um, more experience in that area, so. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I guess that's a perfect transition to start talking about the students. So exactly, like, how many students are involved in these internships and, you know, how do they get involved? So it really depends. So like we shared, there's a lot of programs happening, right? So we want to be inclusive of all programs, all internship programs. And we also don't want to take credit for work that like our department isn't doing itself, right? So I preface with that because, um, you know, we mentioned we work with Pacific Gateway, uh, we work with existing programs, and then with our positions. But in total, last year, we had about, and I don't want to misquote oh, the over number. Over 400. Yeah. Wow. Well, be yeah. students who participate in internships throughout the year. Yeah. And that's inclusive, again, of all programs, not just um, opportunities that we developed, right, in our, in our, on our team. Um, so, Believe it or not, like the the demand is far greater than the supply. So that's really why we're here. We're trying to actually build in a system that helps us like not only scale, but sustain this work long term. And so back to your original question, which is like, how do students get involved? Honestly, um, right. We've kind of transitioned in that we now have more staff capacity. We have two new team members. They're called business partnership specialists. Mia Janvier Jones and Maria Zapian, they're fabulous. Um, the positions are brand new to the district. So Mia Janvier is at Jordan High School and Maria is at Cabrillo High School. So those are our two pilot sites. Um, and so because we're just getting started, what we're trying to do is instead of kind of having just providing information and being an information hub, we want to proactively not only spread the word about the internships that are coming down the pike, but also help students prepare for the application process, what they need to know. Um, so we're doing a lot of work around that and, and we're just getting started to be honest, but it's very exciting because you know, it's not enough to just have those positions posted because again, we're talking about equitable access. We're talking about far fewer positions than we have students who are seeking out these opportunities. So right now it's really kind of just a standardized application process. You apply, interview, and then students are selected by the employer or the internship partner, we call them. Mm -hmm. um, anything I missed or you want to add to that? Not really. I think um, it, it covers everything. Again, it's what Michelle said earlier is having that one-stop um, hub where any opportunities, internship opportunities, can be shared on that platform that's accessible to all students, whether it's through our application or through um, – like the city prosecutor's application process. It's just um, if it comes through our desk and you know, we're willing to 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 post that those opportunities for students. And I think that's that's the idea is that there's one place to go to instead of trying multiple avenues. But um, if there are ways, you know, just to get the word out to contact us, you know, we'll we'll post it. Yeah. And I mean, speaking from a student's perspective, obviously, you know, I have an internship with LBSD's Multimedia and Marketing Services, and I've been doing that since the summer as well. Um, and I know having that opportunity to just go one in one place and just kind of have this outline of all these different opportunities available, not have to like search individual things of like, oh, medical internships, oh, you know, photography internships, like all these random things, but having it compiled in one place was so helpful for me and, you know, made me see like it was also the way it's set up where it shows like requirements and expectations and just having it all in one spot where I could just kind of look through it, see, oh, okay, something I'm interested, oh, this, never mind. And just being able to pick through that was really helpful. Thank you. That's good to hear. Yeah. yeah. It's so good to hear. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, um, I know we talked about the business, the benefits businesses have from this, but uh, what are the, you know, some of the benefits you see from students or from student perspectives? 
I'll have you tackle that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to flip the script on you, but I do. I would love to hear your perspective, too, at some point on yeah, how you benefit, right? Um, so I would say, you know, some of the more obvious ways, I guess, that students benefit is, you know, resume builders, um, college applications, having that work experience. Maybe if a student wants to go into a specialized program or whatever post-secondary endeavor or job that they're going to get once they leave our our high schools, um, it's just a great thing to have. Um, and I think the other, you know, there is so much value in any work experience, right? Whether it's a job or an internship, I think one of the things that we really try hard to do is get partners to invest in the professional mentorship aspect of things. So, you know, some of the things that we learn on the job, right? There's just not really a way to like teach certain things or a way to coach certain things. And I think, you know, if you see it, you can be it. I think folks sharing, right, their lived experiences, their work experiences, their own trajectories, whether it was linear or not, I think it's really helpful and beneficial for students to say, oh my God, I had no idea. Or like to even see there's an entire array of career opportunities within any given industry, any given company, organization, sector. So I think exposure is a way to summarize that. But then also, again, um, just getting a chance to really shine. And like, I know this is less student perspective and more my perspective, but like, I know I have a huge sense of pride in watching students show how brilliant they are to our partners, right? So I, I hope that that's a confidence builder for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I, I do I do think too, it just any, again, any type of experience I think will help students be more informed, right? Or feel more empowered. We always talk about being empowered and prepared to make informed decisions. So it's like, we want students to make whatever choice is best for them and for their families. And it's really hard to do that if you don't have exposure to different opportunities, right? So I think that's a great way to do it. We use examples of, you know, some students are like, I didn't realize like how much I do not like sitting at a desk, right? So maybe an office job isn't for me. Uh, maybe there's something else that I could explore now that I know that this is actually yeah. accessible. And what I've been reading or, or even when I do the site visits, I hear, um, you know, talking about the skills Michelle mentioned is being able to talk on the phone. Um, and that's a skill set you don't really learn in the classroom, um, but you're in a work environment where you have to answer phones, for example, or drafting emails, email communication, whether it's to their supervisor or their or their supervisor's um, supervisor. And so there's that there's those le learning pieces, I think, and those skill sets that students learn. Another one um, that I've also seen this past summer was public speaking. Mm. Um, mm. You know, they have students have more confidence speaking speaking um, to the public, and it's not their peers; it is the general public that. It's uh, kids, you know, young kids to grown adults. And um, I, I heard, see that and hear that a lot in the evaluations. So um, just wanted to piggyback on, on kind of the skills and, and specific skills that I've seen um, that students really kind of learned. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because for me, I, you know, like one of my favorite components of the internships of this internship and, you know, what I've experienced in other internships as well is, you know, realizing like, OK, like just because I'm you know, going and like partaking in it doesn't necessarily mean that has to be my career path because these are universal skills that we're learning mm, that are mm -hmm. so applicable to whatever career you engage in. And like, if I'm being honest, I don't know if I'm going to go into like filming and, and that's okay. And, and, but it's still such a great experience, especially, um, you know, I'm currently, you know, I'm currently in the college application process, which is terrible as it is, <laughs> but, um, you know, one of the, uh, I'm, I'm looking towards applying to like a public policy school and, you know, what I'm learning right now about, you know, how to market to people, how to, you know, you know, appeal to like the public image or something mm -hmm. or something along those lines is just goes hand in hand with what I'm learning, with what I hope to, you know, continue in the future and what I'm learning right now. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, the majority, uh, sorry, not the majority, but one of the components that I really like is, you know, being able to realize like, okay, this is like a trial round. This isn't something you're committed to. It's, you know, right. a couple months to a year that you're dedicating. 
Um, and then for me, I think the other component that I really appreciate, um, and maybe this com comes from being more of like a senior in high school, you know, ha having my license, but it's like this independence factor of I'm no longer, I no longer um, am spending as much time at school. You know, my schedule is, as, is a little more flexible. And so, you know, I'm dedicating a couple hours each week to this internship rather than, you know, taking a class at school, which, I mean, you know, everyone can do their own thing. But for me, it's been a really great experience of, you know, not, you know, your whole high school career does not have to revolve around school. And not, once again, if you want to be in school and you want to take extra classes, be my guest. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's been, I feel like it's been a lot more beneficial for me to have that flexibility and, you know, leave school two hours early some days to go to an internship as well. Mm -hmm. And there, there's so that. many other students like you, you know, that, that are interning um, during the school year. Uh, obviously, there's more flexibility during the summer, but um, they they enjoy it. I mean, just to be in an office environment, set schedule, and and getting paid for it. So that was another benefit I don't think we mentioned, but yeah, um, it, being able to get paid for the internship as well. Yeah, and just piggybacking off of that, I don't know how much you can speak to that right now, but can you, you know, kind of discuss what the compensation looks like for students involved? And I'm sure it's different for the different businesses. Great question. So we have an aspirational goal that we've been able to uphold the last two years, but I'll just say it plainly, like we want to eliminate unpaid internships because it's an equity issue, right? Not every student has a choice as to whether or not they could take an unpaid internship. So over a paid job, right? So we have so many supporters. It is absolutely collective efforts. There's no way that we could uphold that aspirational goal without support from so many folks from the district, Dr. Baker, funders, um, you know, philanthropists, um, our partners over at Pacific Gateway, um, and any position that you see will be minimum wage. So majority are $15 an hour minimum wage. Um, nothing goes be below that. We do have some businesses who have more resources, right, than others um, that can pay, you know, for instance, $17 yeah, an hour. Directly. And, you know, just to just to make sure that I, I you know, comment that it's really interesting because there are so many smaller businesses and organizations, right, in Long Beach. So they may not have the fiscal resources to pay students. But they have the time and the will and, you know, have made a huge commitment in taking on that role of a professional mentor and creating a rich experience for students. So where those partners come in, where you mentioned like the district and Dr. Baker and funders and Pacific Gateway, there are they are filling those gaps um, so that we can ensure that every experience is going to be a paid internship experience. That's awesome. And, and then. Another, you know, kind of a side question. I mean, obviously, I'm in high school and I got affiliated with this in high school, but is this open to middle schoolers or are high schoolers your target group? Or is there a way to even continue this after high school? So I'll let, uh, well, we can tag team yeah, the question, we'll but just, I would say, you know, there are um, certain labor laws, right? There's age requirements for work permits, things like that. Um, so I would just say that's, we typically would not be able to offer, I mean, an experience to a middle school student. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other factors that play into that. Um, we do try to um, prioritize or kind of target uh, uh, 11th grade students just because, you know, and we, it's, we are, I mean, employers are going to select the intern that they select through the yeah. hiring process, but we do try to encourage, right? Like, um, you know, senior year, if you start an internship in the summer or you start in the spring, you know, the college apps and your kind of transition for your next steps has already passed. So then it kind of students miss out on the opportunity of having that on their resume or in their letter of interest or what have you. Um, so it's just we found for many reasons it's a really good age to try to to try to encourage and support as a priority. Um I think with with the target population of 11th graders, too, um, when we look at, at least from the curriculum side um, and the maturity level, I think it's it's geared towards 11th graders. Um, but again, like Michelle has shared, like the employer's interview, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and it's up to them to decide. So um, 
especially in the summer. Uh, so right now, I think we're going to, it's, we're sticking to the high school students right now, but there's always a possibility to explore middle school um, for the future. We just, yeah. The other thing, and sorry, I, I didn't answer the college question or post-secondary students who've, who've graduated, right? So because we are like school district employees and we are a district program, we do try to keep um, our opportunities developed for high school students. So, you know, Sometimes students will continue a position even though they've graduated from LBUSD. But we, because we work so closely with, you know, the Long Beach College Promise Partners and then also Pacific Gateway, like we will make sure that any opportunities that we like that wouldn't necessarily work for our high school students that we're calling up our colleagues or our um, partners over at our other entities and saying like, hey, we have this person, they're more interested in, you know, maybe developing an internship for college students, we'll connect you. So we're trying to make sure that even if we're not the, the folks who are developing it, that we are not letting it be a lost opportunity by leveraging our networks at the college level. That makes sense. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and then I guess kind of like more logistically, um, is so is this typically more of like a summer thing or an all year long thing or is it all over the place so obviously summer is is our largest um when we place the largest number of students in internships just because of the availability uh, we do have placements during the school year um we tend to go um summer then fall slash winter um so that would be uh during the months of september through february and then there's an overlap where we go into spring with some spring internships, um, you know, February through um, June. And and it's just a range. Um, doesn't necessarily we're tied to those months, but um, it's a, it's good to take a look at the website um, during the months of September and January, which kind of follow, you know, the students' um, semester season. Um, I know they have finals at the end of February, I mean, end of January. So um, we try to kind of keep it that way, especially when, it, you know, schedules are, are changed and they are difficult to accommodate um, when most employers may go Monday through Friday till five o'clock, for example. So there is some limitation, but we do have some year-round placements. Got it. And I'd also add that, you know, due to kind of later start times and then also, you know, transportation barriers, that's one reason that we've really um, kind of struggled, I think, during the school year to create more opportunities is that by the time a student gets out of school and then let's say they need to take public transportation to get to the site, business hours are about over. So it's kind of yeah. right, right. It's kind of a, a wash at that point. However, we do have, you know, positions that are kind of hybrid. So students might be working on a project remotely and then, you know, coming in, let's say on a Saturday. Um, so it really depends. And, you know, one of the things just to answer your question, it is all over the place. And, you know, we're humble in just saying that, like, we're trying to build. And I think that's where, you know, we're so appreciative of, you know, student input, business partner input to see how we can streamline things. Because one of the challenges that we've found is, you know, because we never want to say no to a business partner who's like, hey, I think I want to develop an internship. Um, it can go all over the place. So that's why we're like, okay, how do we kind of like put these in different buckets of like fall positions, spring, and then try to encourage folks to work within that timeline that we can manage as a small team of two, <laughs> um, right? And well, then two more, also, right? Yes, yes, yes. So for the, um, yes, for sure. Um, so for the like kind of the development part, that's really centrally managed. And then um, our awesome team members at the school sites um, kind of kind of support in a different capacity, but as in like recruiting students and helping get the word out and promoting opportunities and helping with prep and resume workshops and all that. Um, so all that to say, it's all over the place. We want to build something again that's that's scalable, sustainable, but that works for students and then of course for partners. So that's kind of where we're at. Well, and I think it's also, I mean, understandable that it would be all over the place. I mean, that encapsulates the real workplace. And I, I think that's, at the end of the day, why I really appreciate this. I mean, at my internship here, I, I have a lot of flexibility. You know, if I can't come in, uh, and I'm not saying that it's like this for every student, but, you know, if I can't come in one day because I have to study for the SAT or for an AP test or, you know, high school life, um, 
you know, there's a lot of flexibility, which I really, really appreciate. But um, I just, you know, it's not always going to be this like perfect, like nine to five job. And I mean, obviously you have to account school into that factor as well, but it won't be this like clear cut, you know, picture perfect thing, which I, I think is normal. And I've, I've really enjoyed as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you're right. That. You know, we've got some businesses that are open on weekends, some that are not, some that will open till six, that close at four. Um, so we we try to work with, uh, like Michelle said, businesses and, and thinking about students and what's accessible for them. Um, and maybe it's just a, a, a period of let's wait, wait until the summer. There's more availability then, but um, we try to tackle every opportunity um, and look at it from um, various angles to see how it can work. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, that's all from my end. I think it's amazing that we have this like special LBOC body dedicated to, you know, helping integrate students into the workforce. I know you mentioned earlier, you know, even having a student that is an internship and then continues, you know, that internship or even working at that business after high school and into college is just the beauty of this entire program. So thank you. Yeah. I and mean, that's all for my end, unless you have anything else to add. I came with a couple questions for you, if Perfect. you don't mind, uh, just because uh, we would love to to benefit from your knowledge and expertise and then just kind of hear, you know, more from your point of view. Um, would love to just know, you know, for you personally, what would you say has been the most impactful part of having an internship with marketing and media services. So are you referring to like specifically this office or just in general with um, with just an internship through the district? Um, either way, I guess whatever compe- whatever you're compelled to, to share. Um, I think it's really just curiosity around like what for you per- like stands out the most to you or what's your – probably going to be your biggest takeaway when you look back in hindsight and go, oh my God, that experience was great for this reason. Or- yeah. Well, I mean, I think that I have to like give a little bit of background on myself. You know, I'm, uh, you know, working with the Long Beach Green Schools campaign and a lot of, you know, what I've been doing was, you know, working with the community and trying to get community engagement in, you know, passing a board policy and committing LBSD to 100% clean energy. And, and I just, I think that, you know, that along with, you know, my interest in continued continuing like public policy management and analysis uh, into college, you know, goes right hand in hand with a lot of what we're doing here, like enrollment campaigns and, you know, featuring like district highlights on social media platforms and Instagram and Facebook and yada, 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 just basically working on, you know, creating like working on public image and like social media presence is I think something that's been really like for me specifically, something that I've been able to, you know, learn here, see how LBSD does it and, you know, how maybe like the Long Beach Green Schools campaign can mimic or even, you know, whatever I do in the future as well. A lot of these same skills will obviously be universal. Thank you. No, I love that. Um, And, you know, I'm curious too, based on, I mean, it sounds like you are well on your way to being a leader in public policy, which is so exciting, by the way. Um, Yes, I'm excited for you Um, and for us, frankly. But um, I, you know, we, like Kay How shared, we have surveys after each student goes through an internship experience. And, you know, one of the things that we ask is, how can we be better about getting the word out? And I know you've mentioned social media platforms. Um, what would you say we're missing or what what should we be what opportunities should we be seizing in order to get the word out about the opportunities beyond the website? Well, once again, I don't know how applicable this is to every student, but I know like my friends, we you know see Canvas every single day because that's obviously since COVID the platform our schools have been using. And I mean, it's so easy. You can just like click the X box on every Canvas reminder and, and just ignore it. But for those students that are seeking those opportunities, you know, and see those those notifications or see, you know, oh, look, like internship opportunities. I think that that for me was what, what you know, that's where I get most of my, the majority of my information from the school. But I also know that's tricky because then you have to work with local school administration to put that up. But I think, you know, having it at a more local uh, school level um, is really the key to spreading the word. Thank you. Super helpful. We duly noted. I love it. Thank you. 
And then, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes. So what might you say to a peer or a friend or an acquaintance um, who's never really considered applying for an internship? Um, what, would, what might you say to them to encourage them or, pretend, or potentially change their perspective? Well, I hate to start off with this one, but A, you get paid for it. <laughs> yeah, um, hey, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty, yeah. And I mean, you know, like, that's obviously a big one for a lot of people as well. Um, but I think, and I know we talked about this earlier as well, is there's really no harm. Like, you, you're you not committing to anything. It's not like this is necessarily, like, my job for the next 40 years. Like, I, you know, it's just one thing to experiment, you know, like, dip your toes in the water, see if you like it, see if you don't, see what components you like and what components you don't like, so that you could kind of take that with you in the future. It's, it's I guess... My whole point is it's not something that you are solidifying yourself into. You're not, you know, cramming yourself in a box. You're just getting a taste of everything so that you can decide what you like best. I love that. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I do not. I mean, <laughs> I think we went over what we wanted to ask, so, but I, great answers. Um, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming in today. Yeah, no, we really excited. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Diana.